Did Chinese scientists just discover evidence of alien civilization? How is the US arguing that Chinese people being able to feed themselves is a threat to their national security? And we have a very rare example of Western media presenting a good Chinese story without a China bad spin. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到外美看中国。我是安博然。Hey, you guys, welcome back to Reports on China. I'm Andy. Let's get reporting. The world started buzzing this week when the Global Times tweeted that scientists from Beijing Normal University may have found signs of extraterrestrial life using China's 500-meter aperture spherical radio telescope, known as Tianyan in Mandarin Chinese. The telescope, the largest of its kind in the world and located in southwest China's Guizhou province, went into official operation in January 2020. It's already made significant discoveries, including two new pulsars, but it may have recently made its biggest discovery yet: signs of alien life out there in the universe. Global Times broke the news on June 14 to the rest of the world, soon after a Chinese language report was released by Science and Technology Daily, which unsurprisingly sent the scientific community into a bit of a frenzy. The report said that Professor Zhang Tongjie. Chief Scientist of the Department of Astronomy and Extraterrestrial Civilization Research Group at Beijing Normal University, had discovered several cases of possible technological traces and extraterrestrial civilizations from outside the Earth. The signals are said to have come from one of the known exoplanets, but China has yet to release the details so that the international science community can investigate further. The professor warns. The possibility that the suspicious signal is some kind of radio interference is also very high, and it needs to be further confirmed and ruled out. This may be a long process. The professor and his team will no doubt be wanting to keep the coordinates a secret for now, so that they can continue undertaking the required research in China's name. I'll be watching the skies closely. The U.S. government is arguing that China's desire to be self-sufficient when it comes to food is a threat to the national security of the United States. This Fox News headline clearly shows, in my opinion, the battle between their real motives and the fear-mongering propaganda they undertake in order to make their insane plans palatable to the American people. The headline reads: "China's interest in U.S. agriculture poses security threat." Federal report warns. But the byline illustrates their real thoughts and reads: China's determination to be agriculturally self-sufficient poses a security risk to the U.S. They go on to say: China's determination to become self-sufficient and resolve its food security challenges could put the U.S. as the world's leading producer in agriculture in Beijing's crosshairs. A federal report warned this week. So basically, what we can see here is the very real fear the U.S. has of China developing its own resources and technology to the point where it can feed its own population without relying on other countries, namely the U.S. Without any evidence whatsoever, a report by the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission suggests that the world's most populous nation having enough food to feed itself would harm the U.S. Which is just an extremely thinly veiled way of using fearmongering to clamp down on China and ensure that it's beholden to the U.S. and its political whims in order to feed 1.4 billion people. If you read on, which unfortunately most people do not, you'll see the truth slowly start to emerge. In the eighth paragraph, Fox admit in 2021. One hundred and seventy-three point nine million dollars of exported seeds were sold to China alone, which equated to roughly fifteen percent of total exports. China is looking to dominate the genetically modified seed industry, which has the potential for massive economic windfalls. Advancing Beijing's seed stockpile would not only reduce its dependence on nations like the U.S., it could make it a major competitor in the global market. Well, there you go. This report just goes to show the lengths the U.S. will go to to hold on to its quickly loosening grip on global hegemony. It's going to be an interesting few decades ahead, you guys. Finally, today, some good news. A Western media outlet, this time Bloomberg, has received an A plus from Reports on China for presenting a good news China story without adding the usual China bad twist. Too often, Western media twist good news from China into the negative. 
Here's a really good example from Bloomberg themselves. China is curing cancer faster and cheaper than anywhere else, they tweeted. But some worry they may be going too fast. Do you see what I mean? This type of trick is very common with China stories in Western media. But recently, Bloomberg presented a positive story without a negative twist. China's clean air campaign is bringing down global pollution, their headline reads. The article goes on to say, China has reduced air pollution nearly as much in seven years as the US did in three decades, helping to bring down average global smog levels in the process. This information comes from the University of Chicago's Energy Policy Institute, who added that two years could be added to the average life expectancy in China if this trend continues. People on Twitter were so shocked by this very rare treatment that they began adding, but at what cost, in the replies on mass. Good work, Bloomberg. I really hope you guys keep it up. Well, that's all I have time for today, you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching this far. While you're here, why not hit like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It really does help. Thank you.